Amen. I think, Sister Joyce, you had yes. your hand. Yes. Um, do you have to have the Holy Spirit to talk to God? Uh, no, I, I don't think you have to really have, you know, you can, it, you, you would certainly have to, believe, and I'm going to get to that here in a little while, Sister Joyce, because uh, you, would, you would somewhere have to know that there is a God. Isn't that right? And, and I was going to speak on that. And maybe that's my little segue over into that a little bit because there's a passage of scripture. Thank you, Sister Joyce. Uh, in Romans, the uh, tenth chapter, I'll fit right in here. And uh, you may be, uh, you, you, you know, uh, uh, very, very familiar with it. It's uh, uh, in the tenth chapter. Uh, the eleventh verse, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, in, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And uh, there's a particular order here. And it brings about salvation. It brings about a quickening power. It brings about life. That the, the, the man... <coughs> without the Holy Spirit or woman, mankind, out here in the world, is not thinking about God. Someone has to speak to them. Somewhere, they have to hear the name Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Somewhere, there has to be a gospel preacher. There has to be an anointed preacher. There, there has to be a particular order in all the things God does, uh, he just doesn't randomly uh, do things. Uh, he's very meticulous. He's very exact. If you look at, uh, what chapter is that in Deuteronomy where they, uh, uh, where he gave the instructions uh, to Mo, was it Deuteronomy uh, or X? Where he gave him the instructions to build the uh, uh, the tabernacle, I know that's in Numbers, but it's or maybe it, is it Numbers? It may not be Deuteronomy, uh, but I know it's back there somewhere. Uh, maybe we can find that, uh, or is it Exodus? Yes, the 25th, 25th chapter. Yeah. You can start in the first verse and, and get the whole, the whole context of it. And, uh, but where uh, each thing, he, he told them uh, in the 10th verse, And thou shalt make an ark of acacia wood, two cubics. See, here it is exactly. And, this was, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, in the first verse, this was the Lord talking to Moses, yeah. giving him instruction on how to do it. Yeah. This is how exact God is. Even in bringing a soul yeah. from death to life, right. uh, uh, it, it, it's not a hit and miss thing. God knows down to the, the split second, if I can say it that way, 
exactly how it's going to be. Yes, sir. And just exactly how it's going to happen. And we don't always know, but he knows. And uh, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubic and a half the height thereof. Uh, and then this was the ark. And the, the Ark of the Covenant, it became. And it was to be overlaid with gold. And it was to be made of a particular wood. And uh, this wood that it was made of was, was impervious to insects. It was hard. It would last. It, it was... It's real hard. Real hard. It's real close pores in it. Yes. And, and, and uh, the, the bugs couldn't get into it. It's shut tight. And uh, uh, it was to be overlaid with gold. And it was to be made a, a certain width, depth, and height. Because this is, and, and uh, we don't have time to get into uh, all of these things. Uh, it would take an hour just on, the, just on that. Yeah. The dimensions yes. are beautiful when it comes to it. The wood, yes. the way it's overlaid, the wood represents the humanity of man. Right. Uh, it's got a real scaly, thorny bark on it. Right. You have to be cleaned off to come to God. And a pattern cut to a pattern. It takes together. work, doesn't it, Brother Derek? Oh, Derrick? it's beautiful. It yeah. takes work. And it takes a lot of work for us. And, and see, God is still building. He's a master craftsman. Yes, he is. And he's still working today. He's still bringing all. See, he and he moved from that. If you look at, uh, I think it's the fourth chapter of St. John, of uh, where he said that they need to worship in Jerusalem or this mount, yeah, the he, he, yeah, the, he, he, the, for the they shall the, the true worshippers shall worship him in, in spirit and in truth, and he moved from that in, in his progression to the day of Pentecost, to where he actually took a boat in us, yeah. and now we are his workmanship. Paul said. And we are being fitly framed together, aren't we? Yeah. As a building that he wants to occupy. Yeah. And the reason here in the 25th chapter of Exodus, and I'll get back over to Romans here in a minute, was that he was, he was wanting to construct a place to where it would be holy. Yeah. That he could come. Yeah. And he could dwell with man. And he could reconnect with man and have something back with mankind that was lost with Adam in the garden. Yes, amen. Because we're his creation and he loves us and he wants to be with us. He wants to, to dwell with us. That's why I said earlier we should take advantage of it. Yes. Uh, don't never cease to pray. That's it. Don't never amen. cease to speak to God. He wants to dwell with us. He wants our attention. We have to give it to him. We can't give it to another. I believe one scripture said, in so many words, he was a jealous God. And if you start giving your attention to somewhere else, and he's going to let you know about it. He's going to come knock on your door one day. After he's called you, separated you, whittled on you, worked on you, and uh, praise the Lord. Here they are right now, Brother Kenny. Amen. Amen. Good to see you folks. God bless you. And uh, so that, that's real good stuff. And, and uh, he, uh, uh, above that ark, there was a lid. And on top of that was the, the mercy seat where the cherubims were. The two cherubims represented God the Father and God the Son. Uh, overlapping and that the, with that wing touching and uh, uh, he would come in right there and visit with them with that priest once a year and that Shekinah glory of God would be there isn't that wonderful amen we'll get back to that one day brother Daryl and we'll talk about it some more and uh, so uh I was going to talk a little bit about on, on order tonight, and uh, uh, when that was uh, brought, when that question came forth, that quickened my mind 
to what I was looking at earlier, that uh, somewhere uh, an individual has to hear uh, the gospel. Somewhere a person uh, has to be preached to. Uh, they, they don't know it within themselves. How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So there's a particular order. And, and this brings a person to salvation. And uh, when, we group, when, when an anointed ministry comes together and, and, uh, and, and, and people are praying and everybody is in what happened on the day of Pentecost when they all came together and they had been there for 10 days in that upper room and uh, they had everything just right that they had made everything just right they had fixed everything uh, everything was was good between brother don and brother john everything was right between brother don and brother hank and uh, everything was in order and that great power of god that great holy ghost came down and a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues of fire sat upon each one of them. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave up. Yes. Amen. And he moved out of that temple. Yes, sir. He moved out of that uh, tabernacle. And he moved into that place there. And uh, there's a couple of other places also in uh, Another one, another beautiful place is in Matthew, and we'll talk about this for a few minutes, um, is in the 14th chapter of Matthew. And let's see, Matthew 14, and, and I, I guess we're just kind of dealing with order here for a minute of, of how God works and uh, showing you some examples and places in the Bible that they give us a foundation to stand off. That, that lets people know that when they come in here and they've never seen anything like this, that we're not doing this ourselves, yes. but he's doing this. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Yes.
they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. 